today I wanna to answer a question that I know is on everyone's mind because I get it six or seven times a week. When are interest rates going back to two and 3%? Well, I hate to break it to you, but not for a very, very long time if ever. And here's why. What you have to understand about mortgage rates, and I'm gonna to try to explain this the simplest way that I can, mortgage rates are controlled by external factors. The basic mortgage rate is when you're going to borrow money from, let's say, Loan Depot, you're gonna get it initially from Loan Depot, but you know that that loan is gonna be sold to probably someone else. In some cases, we may carry it. In most cases, it's sold because the money gets moved around after the loan is done, right? And at the end of the day, it's always held by investors. Think about it as like buying stock, but in this case, it's a bond. What happens with these bonds is they are made up with tens of thousands of different mortgages and they're all put together in a coupon and then people can invest in them. What's happening right now is people don't want to invest in them because the interest rates are getting a little bit higher. The classic rule of supply and demand, what happens when somebody doesn't want something and there's a lot of it? <laughs> the price drops, or in this case, interest rates get worse because it goes the opposite direction because you're borrowing money. So the reason why things are more expensive is because of inflation. Too many dollars chasing not enough goods. We all know that today, the price of eggs costs a hell of a lot more than it cost you a year ago or two years ago or even 10 years ago. Why is that happening? Well, there's too much money out there. We have been spending like crazy. If, if you've been watching the news, you can see that we've reached the debt ceiling once again. There is way too much money out there and not enough goods to back it up. So things become more expensive. That's just how it works. What happens during recession timeframes? I know we've talked about this in other videos as far as what we can expect interest rates to do as well well as housing and all of that. And the most recent one was the COVID one, right? The, the world was shut down, the government had to shut things down, people were out of jobs. It was a crazy time. I mean, you, you were going and buying 50,000 rolls of toilet paper at once, it made no sense. But the problem with recessions is we don't really, they don't really give us the data on them until they're already over. So if we look back at the most recent COVID recession, and that is when interest rates were in the twos and three percents, because interest rates almost, in fact, they have done this in every single recession over the past 35 years, interest rates have dropped during recessionary timeframes. With us have it at a higher interest rate right now, and we know that we're either in a recession or going to be entering a recession very soon, that means interest rates are going to come down. However, they are not going to get to that two and 3% mark because of this. Did you put me in a corner yet? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it real fast so we have it. Nobody puts Braden in a corner. So what we're looking at here is the difference between 30-year mortgage rates and the 10-year treasury yield over the past 35 years. You see two lines, and then you'll notice a spread or the difference between those two lines. It's historically almost always 2% different, which means mortgage rates are gonna be about 2% higher than what the 10-year treasury yield is going to be. I'm showing it as a basis point. Basically 100 basis points equals 1%. So that's the easiest way to explain it. So the normal spread is between 175 to 200 or 1.75 to 2%. If you look at this chart, you can see back in 2020 and 2021 when rates got super, super super low because the 10 year treasury yield was so low. If you also remember the Fed, we all know the Fed because they've been jacking rates up like crazy. Where were Fed rates during the most recent recession? They were near zero. So when they're near zero, that puts the 10 year treasury note right above that. And again, if interest rates are gonna be about 2% higher, that's how we got to two and 3% because historically that's how it works. You can see it right here on this chart. Something kind of weird happened last year when interest rates spiked. And again, this is the first time it happened in, in history. We saw about a 3% spread between the 10 year treasury yield and mortgage rates. And that's why they got up into the sevens because even though we were right around three, 4% on that treasury yield, we had higher because because there were so many different fears of what was going to happen with interest rates and with the Fed basically being asleep at the wheel and not managing the Fed rate the way that it needed to be managed. So the Fed increasing rates right now is actually a good thing. It's helping bring inflation down. I'm already starting to notice it. Like, I mean, gas prices just not too long ago, they were 
you know, six, seven bucks a gallon, and they've already come back down to like three, four. That's part of that. That is part of the Fed rate hikes helping cool inflation and getting it back to a normal status. The Fed is also aggressively hiking rates, which means it's more expensive. So I wanna explain that in a little bit more simple terms because a lot of people don't understand what the Fed rate is. Have you had a bank account in the last 10 years? Most people are gonna have some sort of a bank account, right? You probably have a savings account as well. Now, if you're with one of the major banks and even a credit union, over the past, you know, three, four years ago, how much was your savings account paying in overall interest? I know mine was paying about 0.01%. It was sad. Like, just next to nothing, right? That percentage of as far as what your money is earning comes directly from the Fed rate because that is the rate at which banks can borrow money. So if they can borrow it really, really low, they're going to return that. They're going to offer it to their consumers at a low price as well, but not that low because they still have to make a profit because that's how it works. Banks make money. They hold your money and then lend it out at a higher dollar amount while paying you pennies on the dollar. That's why banks have all the money. Like it's genius and kind of a scam. So with the Fed increasing rates, it is now more expensive for banks to borrow money. The reason why they want to do that is they want us spending less. Overall credit card debt right now is at an absolute all time high because it was cheap. It was inexpensive to borrow money over the past few years with that Fed rate being as low as it was. So the Fed's goal with raising rates is to stop consumer spending. We have to get less dollars out there. Right now there's too much money and not enough goods, and that is causing prices to increase. So they're trying to pull out of that back, curb spending. They don't want you spending as much money, which is like the opposite of what was happening during COVID, right? They were giving it away, which is also part of the problem, but don't get me started on that. The reason why we are not going to see rates go back to two and 3% because that Fed rate is continuously going up, and they've already said they're gonna continue raising it until they feel that things are under control. The economic cycle for these things to happen takes years. We're talking 30 years in some cases. Again, barring some sort of natural disaster, worldwide catastrophe, we are not going to see interest rates get that low probably for the next 30 years. And this is a big reason why, is because again, mortgage rates are always gonna be about 2% higher than that 10-year treasury yield. So if you look it up, you can Google this. As of today, which is February 16th, the treasury note is at 3.81%, which means interest rates should be right around 5.8, right? But they're not, they're six and a half and they're in seven because of all of the concerns and because inflation is not under control yet. So you have to think about how long is it going to take to get inflation under control. Once it's under control, that doesn't mean that prices go back to where they were before. They keep going up. We're gonna match it, but we're, we're gonna have it go back to that 2% difference. So once we get back to that 2% difference, yeah, we're, we're gonna be in the fives, which is a great interest rate, but do not expect anywhere between two to 3% anywhere in the near future. Again, not without massive buy downs and things like that. That is essentially why we are not going to see that happen. Again, there's always crazy stuff that can happen. COVID was a complete one off. That, and that was a big reason. So COVID was a straight up global thing. It was happening to everybody. Here in the US, we had that Fed rate at near zero, which means that the 10 year treasury note was, it was like 0.75. And that's when interest rates got to like two and 3%. So that, that, that makes sense why it happened. But again, now we have a much different problem. So long story short, I mean, we're, we're not gonna see rates in the twos and threes anytime soon. So I apologize if I'm breaking the news to you. This does not mean that all hope is lost. Yes, homes are a little bit more expensive, but I know right now we're kind of in a unique time and I cannot stress this enough because once interest rates do go back to the fives, that's a number most people can handle. They're comfortable with fives. Six and seven scare people. They don't like that. There's less people that are buying homes right now. Trust me, I'm doing it every day. Once it gets into the fives, that's going to wake up a lot more home buyers. People go, oh, I, I can handle 5%, right? That's, that's not too bad. And so it's gonna wake up more and more buyers. And again, law of supply and demand, what happens when we have more people interested because there's still not enough homes on the market. Yes, there's more available right now because less people are buying and we're momentarily in a buyer's market where you can negotiate a sales price where you don't have to go way over asking to get it. You can get the seller to pay for your closing costs. You can even get them to pay for rate buy downs. But this is only going to be momentary because once inflation is under control and rates get back into the fives, that's gonna wake everybody back up again. And until there's enough homes 
that are out there to meet demand for our for our home buyers. I mean, you saw what happened in 2021. Unless you were gonna offer 10, 20,000 over asking and waiving all kinds of stuff, you, you couldn't buy a house because interest rates were so low and it was, it was much easier to do. That's all I'm saying. If you're truly considering purchasing a home, whether it's your first one or you're thinking about renting yours out or selling it or buying a new one, right now is a really good time, but it's not gonna last very long. My prediction is till about June or July of this year, once inflation gets under control and that'll drop rates back into the fives and that's going to wake up all these other buyers and we're going to be back to a seller's market, multiple offers, and you won't be able to get things like a negotiated sales price for under what they're asking or the seller to pay for your closing costs. Does that make sense? I'm asking you. The simplest way I can explain it, I know it probably wasn't that simple. If you are considering purchasing a home, even if you think it might be expensive, even if you think that you can't afford anything right now, let's at least look at it. Cause I promise you, e even if that, your first house almost always is not gonna meet all of the requirements for what you may want with a home. My very first house, I could barely afford it and it was way out in Timbuktu and I had like an hour drive to work every day and that sucked. But getting into that first house allowed me to make a lot of money when I sold it to buy my next house. It's all about getting that first one. Once you start getting into real estate, the possibilities become endless. You cannot time the market, but if you are gonna try to time it, I'm telling you, between now and mid of this year is gonna be a great time. So if you're serious, please give me a call, apply on my website. You don't even have to talk to me if you don't want to. You can just go to www.teamhatchman.com and you can apply today and I can tell you how much you can actually qualify for. So hopefully this has been helpful. Sorry guys, we're not gonna see two and 3% anytime soon. There are several ways to get that monthly payment and that interest rate lower through creative financing and having a great loan officer. Thanks.